Okay, what's this here? Uh, let me see. Uh, no, select. Ah, uh, I'll pass. More briskets here. Uh, wait, try tip. And not for that price. Point. Okay, so wait, what's this here? Oh, of course. This one's better. Horse hammer, one ninety nine a pound. Prime. Oh hell yeah. This one, this one's coming home with us, guys. And so I brought my lucky find back home with me. I was happy to get this prime grade beef shank, also known as Thor's hammer, for such a great price. But first things first, let's check to see if I'll be able to fit it standing up on the smoker. And so I angled the top of the bone just right so that I was able to close the top of the camp chef. It's a fit and it's a go. The Norse gods are calling. Find the power of Odin. Yeah, to the left, to the right. <laughs> That's right, you bitches. Come on, oh, come on, I mean, you got shit on the oh, oh. oh, I'll just stick to barbecue. Welcome back once again, my good people. Today we are cooking a beef shank or a beef chin that is also known as Thor's hammer. And I'll be giving you five tips you should know if you decide to cook this same piece of meat. Starting with the first one right off the bat, there are two types of shank cuts, the fore shank and the hind shank. The fore shank is usually bigger than the hind shank. The fore shank also has a thicker bone than the hind shank. The hind shank is usually preferred for dishes like also buco because the meat is more rounder and more structured around the bone than the fore shank. But you'll get more meat from the fore shank. The fore shank also has two bones versus the hind shank just having one bone. Aside from what part of the cow it's cut from, there is also a French shank, which is when they cut away the meat from the smaller side of the bone to make sort of a handle. Now just be aware that this piece of meat has a lot of gristle and tendons, so if you option for the French hind shank, you'll be paying for a lot of bone and in the end of your cook, you will yield the least amount of meat versus a regular cut of four shank. So what we have here is a regular cut four shank. So let's see what kind of trimming we need to do before we apply our binder and rub. Taking a look at the wider end, there is a bit of the elbow cap that we will trim off. These two bones on the fore shank kind of meld into one on the other end. So I will turn this towards the camera so I can point out the two bones with the knife. And so this brings us to the next two things you should know. Should you trim or leave the shank untrimmed? And should you use butcher's twine or no twine at all? Taking a look at our shank, ours came with butcher twine already. So we're going to leave it as is. We'll just do some minor trimmings in places where we think it needs it. But other than that, we're basically leaving it untrimmed. Now, as you can see, the shank has silver lining all the way around. The benefit of leaving it on there is that you're less likely to need butcher's twine to hold it together. And the lining does contain a lot of the juices within the meat. Now a con would be that you would not get bark on the meat directly, which brings us to the benefits of trimming the shank. So trimming the silver lining will not only get you the bark on the meat itself, but on the final product of shredded beef as well. How moist it will be will depend on you. So consider using an aluminum tray or cast iron pan underneath your beef shank to catch those meat juices. So in conclusion, if you leave your beef shank untrimmed, you are less likely to need the butcher's twine. You can trim it and not use the twine, but you run the risk of it falling apart on you. Today we are using yellow mustard as a binder and we are just going to rub it on the shank till it's completely covered. This will help the rub bind to the shank. Next, we apply Arning Texas brisket rub and I'll have the link for the rub on the video description and we're gonna make sure all sides are covered. All done with the prep and this brings us to tip number four. Cook the shank standing or on its side. As you saw in the beginning of the video, we are cooking our standing. If you have the clearance on your smoker, I recommend you cook it standing. The benefit of this is that you will have most of the bone marrow to use when you wrap the shank. Bone marrow kind of turns into butter as you cook it, and if you cook the shank on its side, a lot of it will drain out unless you use a tray or a pan underneath. 
And so it's been about two and a half hours now. Let's check out how we're doing in the cook. Oh man, look at that. Uh, bone marrow starting to bubble up here. Some pull back right up here on top. This is almost the third hour. The bark in front is looking pretty good, but if you look at the back, you can see the silver skin is beginning to tear away as the meat expands. We might end up losing more bark when we end up wrapping. I think I already like the bark, but we'll continue a little bit longer. All right, so it's been, uh, I want to say three and a half hours. And uh, I was looking at the, uh, the bone marrow was bubbling earlier. We'll pour some of that out when we wrap it up, but camp it. But just to expedite the cook, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it already. Hey guys, back out here. It's been about five hours. Um, little, about five hours, 175, we're probing. Probably got about uh, two more hours to go. We'll see, it keeps you guys uh, up to date. Sun's about to set and it's about, just about seven hours in guys. I didn't mention this before, but I did turn up the temp to 200, 300 at about the uh, five hour mark. Looks like we're pretty much set to go. Let me temp it to uh, shut down the smoker. Yeah, so. And so the shank reaches a temperature of 204 degrees. We switch the camshaft to shutdown mode. The carryover temperature will take us to about 210 degrees, which brings us to our last tip. When cooking shank, you must bring it to a temperature of 210 degrees or above to break down all that connective tissue. Sun is just about down. Sun down. Cam chef is off. And I believe it's time. Okay guys, so um, I do have my gloves on. Let's go ahead and open this up. Look at the bone, how much it pulled from the very, very beginning. Look at that. Okay guys, so we do have the juices here. And here we go guys. Oh, look at that. Oh my God. Look at that meat. Look how tender it is. Oh, some of it's falling off. I'm gonna have a taste here. Mm. And so we bring the meat inside to continue pulling it. And you can see here the amount of tendons and connective tissue the meat has. That's why you must cook this to a high temperature. So moving that off, you can see that the meat is almost reminiscent to um, barbacoa. You have to go through it and make sure there's no tendons in there. We did add a little bit more of uh, Arnie Texas uh, brisket <clears throat> rub. The meat is very moist. Look at that. Nice smoke ring around the meat. You can see that the smoke did penetrate. We do have our uh, rice, potato salad, and tortillas. 
ready that my wife made. And finally, dinner is served. Beautiful pool beef with wonderful sides. So tasty and so delicious. And I definitely had fun in this cook. I will list the tips on the video description. Also, there are links in the video description for the items I used in the video. I appreciate you guys stopping by. For more tips, we do have a barbecue chat every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time here on the channel. I hope to see you there. Till next time, take care of yourself and each other. See you on the next one.